Coming up, as we continue to keep an eye on the virus outbreak, your questions like this one keep coming in. If you're wearing a face shield, do you still have to wear a mask? We'll get the answer to this one and more from Dr. John. Plus, this 13-year-old is speaking out about his struggles with stuttering. That just made me feel really nice about how I made that address and how that's impacted a bunch of children's lives. His message to other kids and pandemonium. The National Zoo's newest bundle of joy has the internet buzzing. This is NBC Nightly News. Kids Edition. Welcome back to Nightly News Kids Edition. I hope you are all doing well. We have a lot to share with you today, including a new panda cub and an inspiring teenager with an important message. But one of our top stories continues to be the coronavirus. As new cases continue to pop up across the country, there's some good news. Nationwide, according to virus tracking, the overall number of new cases nationwide continues to decline. Just remember what health experts have been advising, practice that social distancing and wash your hands frequently. Now let's get to your questions. Joining us now is Dr. John Torres. Dr. John, our first question comes from New York State. Hi, Lester and Dr. John Torres. My name is Madhav Nair and I'm eight years old. I live in Albany, New York. And I love your show and I watch it every week. And my question is, if we get a vaccine for the coronavirus, do we have to still social distance and wear a mask? Yeah, I think a lot of people are wondering, Dr. John, when we do get the vaccine, what happens then? And Lester, you're right. I think a lot of us have Martin's question. And the answer is that if enough people get the vaccine, then we're not going to have to social distance or wear a mask. But that's not going to happen right away because it's really hard to get everybody vaccinated all at the same time. And so what's probably going to happen is a few people are going to get vaccinated at first, probably those that work in hospitals, those that could get sick very much from coronavirus. And then the rest of us will slowly start getting vaccinated. In that time period, you're still going to have to social distance and wear masks. But the hope is that if enough people get vaccinated, we have enough protection around the country, we can start easing back on that a little bit and get back to our normal lives. All right, our next question is one that a lot of us have been wondering about since the pandemic started. Hello, my name is William. I live, I live in California and I'm six years old. And my question is, can the corona live on different surfaces? That's been an ongoing debate, Dr. John. And you're right. And William has a fantastic question that scientists have been looking at for months. And what they have found out is on certain surfaces, it can live a while. For, a while. for example, on metal, three to five days. Plastic, it might live up to two days. On cardboard, probably around a day. On fabric, clothes, the couch, the carpet, those types of things. It depends on the fabric, but it doesn't live very long on those. But the main thing to remember is you're more likely to get it from somebody breathing near you if they have coronavirus than you are from the surfaces you touch. But you still want to make sure you wash your hands, especially before you touch your face. Yeah, and our last question comes from Ohio. Hi, my name is Ariana Russell, and I live in Columbus, Ohio. My question is, if you're wearing a face shield, do you still have to wear a mask? Ariana, I'm glad you asked that question because, Dr. John, I, I was on a plane once and I thought, well, I'm going to put on the mask and I'm going to put the face shield on. So to her question, do you need to? And Lester, you got the best protection you can get right now with both of them. And I'll show you why here. Look at my face shield. If you put the face shield on, essentially, if you think about it, the virus can come in from the sides, it can come in from the bottom, or it can go out through the sides and the bottom. However, if you put a mask on top of that with the mask and the face shield both in place, you get the breast protection overall. If you have to choose one, choose the mask over the face shield because that's going to give you and everybody around you more protection. All right, I'm glad you tackled that one for us. Dr. John, thanks as always. You bet. We turn now to the presidential election. On Monday, the Republican National Convention got underway, and President Donald Trump and Vice President Mike Pence officially were renominated. Thank you. 
Now, what does that mean? Well, basically, it means that President Trump and VP Pence will be on the November ballot as the nominees of the Republican Party. They are now officially competing for votes against Democratic presidential and vice presidential nominees Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Now to our inspiring kids series. Last week, a 13-year-old boy from New Hampshire received lots of praise after he spoke very openly about his struggle with stuttering and how he found a friend in vice presidential candidate Joe Biden. You see, Biden has also dealt with stuttering his entire life, and we know it's something some of you kids also have to deal with. I spoke with Braden Harrington and his dad, Owen. And without Joe Biden... I... His bedroom turned into a national stage. Braden Harrington talked about first meeting Joe Biden earlier this year. He told me that we were members of the same club. We... we... Stutter. Last week, during the Democratic National Convention, the 13-year-old opened up and opened our eyes to a challenge faced by millions of Americans, including many kids. I'm just a regular kid, and in a short amount of time, Joe Biden made me more confident about something that's bothered me my whole life. Can you help us understand what, what's it like to be a kid who stutters? Sometimes people um, think that it's a, a funny thing to mock me, and it's just, I, I know I can power through it, and I know that I'll have it before the pit tell my whole life, and I can't do anything about it, so I try to, to, to make it the best of it. He summoned plenty of courage, telling me he spent hours practicing with a therapist, showing reading tools he says Biden shared with him. Sometimes it's hard to breathe, like my my lungs tighten. Sometimes I can't like take that extra breath. Do you believe or do you hope that you are now a hero to other young people who are going through exactly what you're going through? Yeah, I do. I do believe that and I do hope that because um, I've heard a bunch of comments on Twitter, a bunch of people who have the same thing going on that their kids have been inspired in one way, and that just made me feel really nice about how I made that address and how that's impacted a bunch of children's lives. He was really overwhelmed at one point and decided he wanted to push through and continue with this because he wanted to be the voice for those other children that didn't get the opportunity that Braden had. So that's that's why he did what he did. His dad, swelling with pride. Braden has never let stuttering get in his way of um, living life. He's always made it a point to talk to who he wants to and, and uh, say what's on his mind. Braden says he thinks he wants to become a speech therapist someday, but at 13, it looks like he has already found the words to change and inspire. Braden, what an inspiration you are to other kids, my friend. Thank you. Finally, if you like pandas, you're going to love our last story. A new bundle of joy has arrived at the Smithsonian's National Zoo, and the panda baby has caught the attention of a lot of folks. Here's Kevin Tibbles. There are all kinds of oohs and ahs at the Smithsonian's National Zoo in Washington, all because of this teeny tiny pipsqueak. And all that squeaking is what this newborn baby giant panda is all about, says the zoo's senior animal curator, Brian Amaral. How surprised was everyone? We haven't had a cub at the zoo in five years, so based on some of the recent uh, lack of success that we've had, we weren't sure that it was going to happen. The zoo's newest addition is causing quite a stir, as all eyes are on mom, Mei Zhang, to see how well the two are getting along. Mei Zhang, at 22, is getting older in panda years, so it's wonderful news she has given birth again. What's most bamboozling is that no one even knows whether it's a boy or a girl, and it could take some time before zoo staff are able to check up on the baby to find out. While the panda enclosure is now closed to the public for privacy, you can watch the baby's daily progress on, you guessed it, Panda Cam, available on the zoo's website.
Now, here are a few things we should all learn about pandas during these days of baby pandemonium. First, newborn pandas, even newborn giant pandas, are tiny, smaller than a baby rabbit. They don't have any of the trademark black and white fur, and they aren't able to see for several months. So it's up to mom to feed and care for her cub around the clock. She's gonna do all the heavy lifting, she'll be doing the nursing, she'll be doing the caring for the, for the cub. Also, pandas remain quite rare, even in their native China. This new little bundle of joy has three other siblings. All of them are living back in China as the zoo partners with Chinese wildlife agencies to help increase the panda population and keep them away from becoming extinct. Just last year, older brother Bei Bei, a favorite with kids and adults alike, reached the ripe old age of four and was transported back to China as part of the agreement. These days, there are about 1,900 wild pandas left in the world. So this new addition will make everyone smile, especially in a year with the COVID pandemic, where there's been so little to smile about. It took a lot of folks, a lot of dedicated people who really uh, knocked it out of the park this time that helped make this happen. And of course, once they find out if it's a girl or a boy, then they've got to pick a name. What would you name the baby? Well, Kevin, thanks. And that's going to do it for us. Parents, just a reminder, if your child has a question, send a video to us at Nightly News Kids at NBCUni.com. Thanks for watching, everybody. Please take care of yourself and each other.